Merritt Paulson, we do this every year, kind of a, a state of the timbers, so to speak, uh, to enter the season. And this season is a special one, the 10th season for the Portland Timbers in Major League Soccer, just days away from kicking off. What does it mean to you to be at season number 10? Well, it's crazy, really. I mean, it, it, I, I have vivid memories from rolling up to 2011. Doesn't seem that, you know, that long ago. I think I had a better hairline <laughs> at that point in time. but. You know, you think about what we've meant to the league now. I mean, 10 years, we've, you know, through the, the period of sort of MLS's golden age, we've been a cornerstone of, of that growth period. And, you know, there's a lot of talk, and deservedly so, about Atlanta and LAFC and some of the newer clubs and what they've done. But um, we, we, have, we have really put our stamp on soccer in North America and are continuing to do so. And I think that... You know, we still represent the apex for what people can aspire to in atmosphere and culture and, you know, doing things on the field and doing things off the field. And we've done it pretty consistently and doesn't mean we, we, we can't get a lot better as well going forward. There's a different set of challenges now. I think the whole bar has been raised. Um, so, but, you know, it's, it's, it's an anniversary, which is a great time to look back and understand where you've been, what you what you mean to the the overall landscape and, and really where we're going and and you know what we have to look forward to as well so in the, in the axe campaign you know right we revisit that and and you know players and coaches are shooting that on thursday and last time we did it in 2015 uh things worked out for us okay so who knows <laughs> the off season oh, important for every club right what did you guys accomplish this off season it was a great off season. Yeah. I, I, I believe that. Of course, everything's rosy right now, <laughs> and, and it always is. And I'm sure there's there's a lot of clubs who who feel yeah. pretty good. But look, let's before we even talk about players, <clears throat> really, we had a couple things going on at the end of last year that were atypical of us. Yeah. Uh, culture and chemistry was broken in the locker room yeah. when we concluded 2019, yeah. through no fault of the coaching staff, yeah. and that's been repaired right now. I, I feel very comfortable about that. There's a great vibe around the locker room, around this team. Uh, we went out and got some top end talent this off season and, uh, you know, some, some, some really big ads. And, and I think that, that, you know, we've got a guy who's, who can help out our, our center back core a lot in Zuprich. I, I feel really good about the four center backs we have. Uh, and the, the depth we've got there. I mean, depth isn't going to be an overall theme and because I think that, that Gio's got some really difficult decisions to make and hopefully to the collective benefit of the team. We've finally got a competition up top uh, as well when you look at where we are at the forward position. Uh, we've never had production uh, historically on the right wing in terms of, of, of goals and assists. And if, if, if we can, you know, get now on the right what we've had on the left, call it, eight goals or so and in, 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 in 10 assists, um, which I think is very possible as well um, from a starter there, you know, in, 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 in Jimmy, yeah. it's, it's pretty enticing. So I think that a lot of good things, but I'll say this, um, you know, this league has had a great off season. There have been a lot of good additions and every team's got a guy that can hurt you right now. And dating back to as far as four or five years ago, our team's been a team that's confident that it can turn it on when it needs to, can sort of peak in the playoffs. You know, we'll get it done when we have to, and, you know, maybe we go up a goal and we slack off a little bit. I don't think we can do that anymore. I don't think this league allows us to do that anymore. And we can compete, but we've got to be consistent and we've got to kill that trend. And we've got to kill that trend in our own locker room. We need to be a lot more consistent. Um, we, 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 just cannot take the pedal off off the, the floor, and I think that home field advantage is a lot more important under the new player, the new uh, playoff format. We saw that last year. We need that home playoff game, and we need to be competing for top spot in the West. Let's talk about the league as a whole. Tenth season for you guys. It's the twenty fifth season for the league. It, it is a big season. Uh, you mentioned the growth and the, how it's changed over the past four or five years. Even what do you see uh, as where the league is at right now and where it's going? But the quality is undeniable, and in, in this off season in particular, I'm, I'm pretty interested to see how it all pans out. 
For one thing, the West is a lot better than the East. I, I'm not going to make any predictions, but I mean, I think there's been, you know, a imbalance recently, a conference imbalance where the West has more often than not been the tougher conference. Uh, I think that that's that gap might be bigger than it's ever been. Would be my prediction right now. You look at at, at the quality of the additions that the uh, Western Conference made, and um, you know maybe a couple of the teams that have been really good in the East haven't had as as, as great off seasons. So who knows? I mean, there's going to be good teams in the East. New York FC and. Um, I'm sure Atlanta, Toronto, and uh, Columbus looks like they had a decent offseason. Uh, you never know, but you know it's it's a it's a wildly imbalanced, uh, wildly maybe a little bit of hyperbole. But I think the West is is going to be a, a, a slugfest. But uh, overall, every team's got a guy that can hurt you. You know, and, and we saw that in New England th th this weekend. Uh, I think, you know, Vancouver Cavallini is an interesting addition. He, he did well on our preseason tournament. You know, every team now has a, t a, a top end talent that, that can punish you. And that's a great thing. And I, I think that um, the influx of talent from Liga MX, Liga MX is a pretty interesting trend that we're seeing. Um, owners being willing to spend um, on more top end talent in general. And I think it's going to bear out to be a really, really interesting season. You mentioned being at the apex of, of MLS on and off the field and how difficult the West will be. What are your expectations? How does this group kind of stay at that apex in, in 2020 in the Western Conference? This is a group this year that can compete for every trophy, and that's our expectation. You know, we, we, making playoffs is not a goal for the 2020 season. It's, it's, we've got to... We've got to be a top team in our in our conference, and we've got to compete for trophies. And um, you know, again, uh, I talk about the fact that we've fought complacency, you know, and 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 really, in some ways, maybe we used it as an, it as an advantage again to peak when, when this is a playoff league. Um, but uh, Gio's also got the depth in the squad that he can use to 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 combat that. I mean, I think we have more competition for playing time and roster spots than we've ever had, and I hopefully that's going to going to work out well to our adv advantage. So, look, my expectation is is um, you know, hopefully we stay healthy and and um, if if we're fortunate along those lines, this team's going to be a team that's competing for trophies and not just MLS Cup. I, I think again, we're disadvantaged in the West to to go after supporter shield, but uh, who knows? LAFC ran away with it last year. So, uh, but but we, we could we could break to the high side. But we've got to we've got to be deadly serious about using the fact we finally have a balanced schedule. And and again, the I I can't overstate some of the the knock on effects of of you know the front loaded games and, and, and not just last year, but year before that. It, it it throws so much rhythm off. Even when you end up home and you've got more points than you know you thought you needed to 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 compete you got to totally change the way you play and um you know it's it's uh there's a lot of fatigue from that travel that that that, that has an effect after the fact um i think having a balanced schedule this year is something that we're really embracing and having the benefit of the preseason tournament as well and getting guys like uh jimmy chara um uh up to 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 speak Speed on our on our playing surface. I think the game he played, you know, the two games he played the other day were two of the only games he's played on artificial turf, you know, in the last eight years or so of his career. So, you mentioned competing for trophies. One of the trophies you guys will compete for is the League's Cup, which new to the Timbers, second year, uh, and expanded this season. How how is the team going to approach League's Cup? Well, I think I think League's Cup, you know, it, it got announced last year as sort of this is what it is, and, and League's Cup is really just the first step in a deepening relationship with Liga MX, and we're talking about ways we can make League's Cup more significant, uh, whether that be, well, I'm not even going to speculate right now, I'm not looking to make headlines on, on these things, but there's some very tangible things we're talking about beyond the financial benefits to the players, um, uh, you know, to, to make the tournament more significant, and we're talking with uh, folks in Liga MX about about doing more competition and, and you know watching CCL right now we've made some tweaks to our calendar but we're still coming off three and a half month off season playing teams that are in form in Mexico and it's it's not apples to apples in any way shape or form and League's Cup in some ways is a better measuring stick I mean we've never played a Liga MX team 
uh, for anything uh, of, of significance. And I, I get there's some, some skeptics out there among our fans about this tournament, but uh, you know, it's on us to, to, to change that. I can tell you guys in the locker room are pretty pumped up about it. And uh, um, you know, it's gonna be fun for us. We're gonna play a top quality Mexican side and, and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take it very seriously. We look forward to that this summer. And on Sunday, a season opener at home for the first time in a few seasons. We look forward to that uh, as well. I know you and, and the team do also. We will. Merritt, thanks for, for uh, joining us and good luck in 2020. Thanks a lot.